Hello and welcome to episode 61 and 62, From Ground to Orbit, Azerbaijan's Footprint in Space. Today, to have a deeper look at the developments of space technology in Azerbaijan, uh, we have today with us Natawan Hasanova. Hi, Natawan. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Onkar. Thank you. Uh, good to hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are equally glad to have you. I think uh, since ISC, you and your team has been uh, quite busy and I'm uh, hoping that you know there have been like qu quite a lot of plethora of opportunities coming into the country and I'm glad to see that you know you and your team have been leading it basically since the beginning. So yeah, uh, taking a little bit you know kind of uh, before I would say taking a deep dive into the topic, uh, can you a uh, little bit tell us about yourself like uh, how did you end up being working in the space industry and mm -hmm. what kind of basically academic background you have? Yes. Yes, uh, sure. Uh, thank you again uh, for uh, this uh, podcast. Uh, I'm a uh, pleasure to be part of it uh, today and to speak about uh, space activities that are happening now in Azerbaijan. So uh, I'm Natavan Hasanova. I've joined Azar Cosmos in 2018. Uh, this year, I'm going to celebrate my six years in space industry. I enjoy a lot of being at this industry because there are lots of things happening and uh, me and our uh, agency in general wants to get benefits from space industry through the applications through the space technologies. Uh, my background is uh, world economics, bachelor degree and uh, Master of Business Administration, International Business. Uh, before joining Azar Cosmos, I was working as business analysis in uh, logistics uh, sphere. Uh, but in 2018, when I joined and started again to do a business analysis type of uh, things, uh, but in space uh, sector, then gradually I evolved uh, to this uh, my current uh, position, which is a strategy and a business development. Uh, well, uh, apart from my I, uh, two degrees I also take some uh, strategy execution courses and also uh, last year I completed uh, my um, executive space course which was held in Strasbourg France uh, and was uh, presented by International Space University uh, well uh, yes it's uh, overall about myself and uh, if I talk about what type of uh, things I'm doing at agency is uh, to find new um, lines uh, for business development and to also develop um, and boost a space ecosystem in Azerbaijan through space outreach activities and to increase awareness among youth. Apart from that, uh, I will, I'm also, um, I have drafted a national space strategy, uh, but currently it uh, goes uh, under review uh, by several ministries and other government structures. So overall, this is uh, what uh, we uh, as agency and me as a uh, strategy and business development director currently overseeing uh, these activities uh, at Azar Cosmos. That's great. It's a, it's a quite a, a long journey, I would say. And I'm, I'm really glad to see, like, uh, especially the, you know, the female leads that are coming in in the industry yeah. because we really need uh, this decision making uh, from this uh, side of the gender as well. Uh, I mm -hmm. believe it's not that much common in India, even in the United States, but in Europe, uh, in European Space Agency, we have almost like more than 50% uh, women in the leadership position, basically, working. Yes. And, uh, we see the kind of difference the other agencies have and the kind of difference the European Space Agency has. So I hope, uh, I mean, uh, as as long as the leaders like you are there in the position and your team as well, of course, uh, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, there will be much more developments that will be coming up through Azerbaijan because uh, I believe that in that region, the Central Asian region, Azerbaijan, is the only prime country we can say which has the possible baton to lead, you know, in terms of technology, in terms of economy as well, to become basically yeah. a powerhouse in the Central Asia. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you, Omkar. And yeah. actually, um, uh, I have also part of some uh, gender type of discussion in space sector. Uh, what I wanted to share with you, we know that uh, is 
when we look at globally in this sector, there is um, only uh, two of uh, five uh, people are female uh, working in space industry. But uh, in that sense, we are a little bit lucky at Azure Cosmos because we have uh, one in three employee are uh, they are females, uh, specialists or uh, other things. Uh, actually, this is uh, what we also somehow trying to uh, develop and increase because uh, as a part of our national space strategy, we have also uh, special dedicated activities to uh, increase employability of uh, female uh, scientists or female specialists in space sector. And for these uh, purposes, we even started new program. Uh, yeah. It is called... Um, Women in Space Mentorship Program, and we are doing Amazing. it in collaboration with a Space Foundation from USA. And we have five mentors uh, joining uh, globally from Belgium, US, and uh, also France. And uh, five mentees, uh, some of them are early professionals, some of them students, and also uh, studying uh, in school. So uh, in general, uh, we see uh, that there's a potential that we, if we create increased awareness among uh, f females, uh, then uh, we also believe that these figures will get much better in the upcoming years. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's great. We are, we are also really looking forward to this development for sure. And I think down the line in the question set, we'll be definitely just taking a much more deeper look at these things. Uh, yeah. So yeah, without any delay, you know, taking a deep dive. Uh, so as we're taking a deep dive into the current and the future space programs of Azerbaijan, so can you tell us a brief history of space in Azerbaijan and how it has led to the foundation for of Azer Cosmos? Yes, sure, I can talk about it. Well, um, if you talk about space legacy, um, before, um, you know, when we get our independence in 1991, uh, we started as an independent uh, republic, Azerbaijan, and started also to uh, get new lines in the space sector and especially uh, founding and creating of other cosmos. But even before 1991, when we were part of USSR, uh, there was lots of Azerbaijani scientists, scholars working in space industry. We were contributing to the uh, Soviet program in space sector and I always say it was a big prop that uh, the a program uh, leader of uh, first human mission to uh, IS uh, to space, uh, it was Azerbaijani Karim Karimov and he was leading a space program and especially uh, Yuri Gagarin's mission. So, uh, of course, uh, when we talk about um, Azerbaijan space activity, I would like also to emphasize that uh, again, uh, 50 years ago in 1973, the IAC, for the first time in the USSR and whole region, was uh, hosted in Azerbaijan in 1973. And it was Baku that hosting and uh, welcoming all uh, space uh, leaders uh, around the world. And it was back then also initiative of uh, Azerbaijani leadership that invite uh, those uh, space communities to Baku. So uh, before uh, the... Uh, before our independence, even there was a space uh, legacy. But uh, of course, when we uh, got uh, our um, independence, uh, there was uh, some uh, brain drain happening and also some difficult uh, period that we went through. But uh, it's uh, likely that after a certain period of time, uh, our le leadership started a new space program. And it was uh, the aim was to uh, launch the first Azerbaijan satellite in 2013, and it was named Azerspace One, and it was the the start of the new uh, space uh, era uh, in Azerbaijan. And afterwards, we started to have our satellite operator activities uh, through data video broadcasting, and we started to uh, broadcast not only our own uh, national TV and radio channels, but also globally other TV and radio channels. Currently, we are uh, broadcasting more than 200 uh, TV and radio channels in more than five languages through our satellites. 
And uh, also, of course, uh, we started to, earth, to do earth observation activities. And here uh, we are working uh, closely with uh, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Ecology and uh, Natural Resources and other governmental entities. And also, of course, we are doing some uh, reporting to the government on climate change. So overall, uh, of course, we will discuss it later, uh, but uh, this is overall how we end up being a satellite operator and space agency of Azerbaijan. That's interesting. That's that's a quite a wide variety of portfolio, I would say. I mean, you mentioned data and broadcasting both. Uh, so it's it's uh, quite interesting to see this kind of, you know, uh, multiple variations in which like Azure Cosmos is there and operating at the moment. So just, you know, kind of to follow up on the same foundation, uh, considering the rapid growth uh, of Azerbaijan that uh, you know, the country has in general recorded in the commercial satellite sector in recent times, can you tell us how the country looks to utilize satellite technology to revolutionize its industry, urban planning, as well as uh, disaster management or emergency management verticals? Yes, absolutely. Uh, when we started uh, our commercial activities, especially since 2013, uh, we started to have different applications in different um, dimensions of uh, economy. Uh, firstly, um, if you talk about uh, specifically telecommunication, here uh, we are providing data services in uh, oil platforms and maritime sectors uh, in some remote areas uh, in Azerbaijan in order to uh, to increase uh, accessibility to the internet overall in Azerbaijan. Uh, apart from that, uh, of course, uh, we are also uh, providing um, some uh, data services uh, for disaster management as well. Actually, currently we are working on this project with uh, one of our uh, mobile network operator. Uh, you know that uh, there are, uh, due to some climate change and other things now we have witnessing more of the disasters happening uh, around the world and coming from the nature and here um, we will use uh, imagery and also satellite data for uh, disaster management so we are uh, currently working on this project with one of our mno in order to create this solution and to have as you said early warning uh, systems in the future uh, apart from that also uh, i would like specifically to mention Earth observation uh, because imagery helped us to do lots of things in this uh, sector. If I uh, talk specifically, I would say that currently we are doing crop mapping of uh, five strategic uh, uh, products as uh, grain, cotton, pad rice, sugar beet and uh, tobacco. All those uh, products are being uh, monitored through uh, satellites and we are uh, giving uh, forecasts uh, to the government about the uh, production that we are anticipating and to have uh, for year basis. Apart from that, also uh, we are doing uh, some monitoring uh, regarding oil pollution and also the water resources uh, management. Here uh, we specifically uh, monitor the level of uh, water surfaces in different areas to see how it is being affected by the climate change. And apart from that, we see that there, there's also droughts and sanitation happening uh, desertification happening uh, in Azerbaijan and here also we are trying to give a, a data-based uh, report uh, to the government so they make a policy based on uh, data. So um, in general yes there are several uh, dimensions on how it helped us uh, also to create space economy in Azerbaijan. Before 2013 we didn't have this notion uh, even but now we can say probably that since 2013 we have uh, created uh, around uh, 300 million USD uh, from uh, these uh, commercial activities that we are having in Azerbaijan. So we created space economy uh, as a definition and also uh, we are doing uh, several projects uh, with uh, uh, state and non-state companies, with commercial companies in order uh, to create value through space technologies and space applications. That's interesting. So I believe like Earth observation is basically it's high in demand at the moment in Azerbaijan. That's for sure. From what you yes, said the... yes, 
Absolutely, absolutely. It's very important to use Earth observation data to track everything and even to have turnkey solution. You know, Omkar, before it was very yes. popular to provide raw data uh, coming from satellite, but now yes. uh, everybody uh, requires solutions, uh, turnkey solutions from Earth observation. And for this purpose, we even started our um, GIS center established. And at this uh, GIS um, center, and now we are uh, providing solutions, not only data, because it's an era of a big data or observation solutions that creates critical role in the industry. Yes, interesting. Yeah, I believe. Uh, uh, I mean, Earth observation in general has, you know, kind of. Uh, it it started, of course, from the military side, but I think now in the commercial side, it has taken a very. Uh, high level of leap of faith, I would say, uh, both in the upstream and the downstream uh, segment. Mm -hmm. It is just that, you know, I think the downstream segment should be now very much empowered to create basically the right services for the market. That's what I believe. Uh, yes. And yeah, just to kind of, you know, uh, going on the same path. So Azure Cosmos is like the prime entity presenting the nation on global platforms. Uh, mm -hmm. So could you share with us uh, how space technology is increasing foreign uh, or international commercial collaborations uh, in the country because uh, as you mentioned there, there are a lot of things going on so i believe definitely there will be some initiations or the collaborations that will the country is initiating at the moment yes yes absolutely actually and uh, we believe that for especially for emerging space countries is it is very important to have collaboration with uh, 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 with a well established um, yet a big um, state or non-state companies, it's very important to have international collaboration. Even when we started our first uh, satellite program, it was poor example of international collaboration because we have collaborated with uh, MIASAT, Malaysian satellite operator, and uh, did, did uh, this uh, program and uh, jointly uh, we have uh, launched our first uh, satellite. And also another example would be uh, our second telecommunication satellite, where it was also a part of international collaboration. We have collaborated with Intelsat and we have jointly uh, launched uh, uh, our satellite, uh, which is uh, Other Space 2. Well, uh, we believe in the power of uh, collaboration because it creates value mutually and everybody can get benefit from such uh, collaboration. And even uh, last year that uh, IAC was held in Azerbaijan, it was also a poor example of international collaboration. Uh, we have uh, managed uh, to bring uh, more than 5,400 uh, delegates coming to Baku from 132 countries. And it was uh, one of the uh, most diverse IEC ever held so far. And uh, nearly 50,000 people uh, were joining remotely, actually. And uh, we saw that uh, lots of um, organizations and uh, delegates coming from different countries in order to uh, participate at this uh, Congress. Uh, we see that uh, even if, if there was not any international collaboration, it would be really challenging to bring such a big event uh, to Azerbaijan. And apart from that, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, our um, overall, uh, our business is uh, internationally oriented. And now we are collaborating more than uh, 200 companies uh, from 50 countries and 80% of our revenue is being generated outside of Azerbaijan. It, uh, is a poor example how uh, Azure Cosmos is international oriented uh, satellite operated and agency. And uh, we also will continue our uh, international collaboration in different dire directions. Here, uh, for instance, in uh, Earth observation direction, we are collaborating with many um, co companies uh, to jointly develop some solutions and apart from that even uh, i would like to mention that last year we signed an agreement in order to uh, develop our next uh, earth observation satellite is also uh, with an international uh, collaboration so overall uh, we see lots of value coming uh, from international collaboration and we are trying to put emphasis on it uh, in years to come 